Hello, Internet. I greet you from behind a wall of bottles to offer what is maybe the best and or worst idea I've ever had for a video. Um, okay, so fortifying beers, adding s distilled spirits to beers. Um, this is not a new idea, actually. The, the, the Boilermaker, as I uh, can't really call it a cocktail um, disaster, I would say, uh, has been around for a good... 130 years or so now, um, and they're terrible, but they don't necessarily have to be, right? I mean, I mean, fortified wines, sherries, Madeiras, ports, all those, all those guys, have been around for far longer, and they work pretty well. So you would think, in at least in theory, the idea of adding, you know, spirit to to a beer, not necessarily during the the brewing process, but uh, some somewhere along the way uh, would would have more purchase. Um, it's not a product you'll ever see really on the shelves, um, basically so far as I understand for tax reasons. Um, but uh, at the very least, you can you could have some fun experiments at home. And maybe uh, a couple of years ago, back in college, I I did some experiments of that sort, and now I'm sort of going back to them um, for fun. So. Uh, here, here is the sort of experiment of the day. Uh, can you add spirit to a beer to make it better, and to you know, and and hopefully not make yourself sick in the process? Uh, so what I've got here, and what we're gonna do to sort of see how this goes is, uh, uh, I have got um, a bunch of glasses here, a bunch of Glencairn glasses, to which I have all added, I all added, um, all of them I have added. Uh, a, an exactly one teaspoon of alcohol of various sorts. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, uh, then pour an ounce and a half. So five, a, a teaspoon is about five milliliters. So I'm going to add about uh, an ounce and a half, 40 milliliters of, uh, to each of these glasses of this guy. This is uh, an Expedition Stout from Bell's. Um, this has been sitting in my closet since uh, l very late 2017. So it's time for it to be drunk. Um, I have some com some some uh, positive views about this beer and some slightly negative ones. Um, oh, so, so back a little background on this. Ba I used to be a little bit of a beer fiend maybe 15 years ago. Uh, and I got myself real, you know, really tired of them. I just couldn't drink the same damn beers again. Uh, so I moved on. But I still like to have, you know, a couple aging in the, in the closet, particularly the uh, the higher strength ones, um, Belgians, Imperial Stouts, that kind of thing. Um, and we are going to work with this one because it's uh, one I think that could stand in a way some some improvement. So what I've got here, I don't know, if, I don't even know if you can see what's going on. What I've got here is my my little shot measuring glass, and I got my beer, so I'm going to add. And I've got uh, seven uh, different Glencairn glasses um, lined up back here. I'm sorry you can't see. Um, that's just a side effect of, I couldn't figure out a better way of setting this up. Um, actually, maybe I should go this way. Yeah, we're gonna start at the bin react here. All right. Um, all right, so what we got, um, is so some some whiskeys to start with because whiskeys are the obvious one right um you know their beer is is grain based sort of by by law and whiskeys also you know by definition are also grain based so they they should theoretically work the best if you mix them um with some beer but i also wanted to have a little bit of fun so i threw in some other things um Hold on, let me finish these off. I will talk to you a bit as I uh, finish off the last of my... So if I were any other channel, I would, you know, I would, uh, you would be seeing like little um, cutaways to slow motion, sexy shots of me pouring, um, you know, beer into my, into my glasses here. I, I do not have those because, you know, I don't, I don't have really the time or the resources to set up those kinds of shots. And I'm also going to have a control here in my little Bunnehaven glass. I'm just going to add the rest of my um, Expedition Stout into that. 
All right. Um, so what I have here is uh, uh, a Benriak, Peter Benriak, um, cast strength. Oh, instant, so maybe I should explain this in advance. I found out uh, experimenting with this in during um, you know years and years back that this works better if you use very very strong spirits. I would not try this with anything below about 50% alcohol. Um, so all these are cast strength or something comparable. Benriak, peated cast strength. Uh, I reviewed this. It was not my favorite um, peated whiskey ever, but uh, I did enjoy it. And we're using, and it was very desserty, and I feel like it might work well with, uh, with an Imperial Stout. Um, this is one I haven't reviewed yet, but I will, uh, once I find a sparring partner for it. This is an, an independently bottled Nock Du, makers of Anok. Um, and it's uh, 10 years old and one of the best sort of examples of just sort of shameless, you know, naked maltiness I can think of in recent memory. But uh, so those are, those are the malted ones, which are, ob you know, obvious ones because this is going to be a malt dominated beer. Uh, I also wanted to, to throw in some other whiskey options, though, and I went with uh, a 100% rye. So I found also in my experiments that corn um, doesn't really play well with beer for some reason. Um, you can experiment with that. You can disprove me, but if you, I found that if you left corn out of it, it seemed to work better. So I've thrown in a 100% rye here. This is my favorite of the bunch. Um, this is also, I think, the second strongest thing I've got on the table here. Um, I like this very much. The strongest thing I got on the table is uh, a, a rum. This is my first of the fun things. Uh, this is uh, the Worthy Park um, 150, 151 bottled by Vellier. This is a white rum, so no oak on this at all. Uh, and I've got um, my gigantic, um, uh, straight from the barrel, uh, Daniel Boyou Royal cognac as the brandy option here. Um, so I'm, I'm waiting, I, wa I want to see what will happen in the interaction between French oak and um, Imperial Stout. Um, that should be interesting. I've got a high proof tequila here. I've got G4, um, what is this, 108. Um, and I've got, and this is my wild card, like um, this, this is a Baijo. Um, if you don't want to know what a Baijo is, please go, I'm gonna link up all the reviews for these things below. Um, but basically this is, so, so, and if you don't know what a Baijo is, you're going to say, oh my God, why would you do this? Why would you ruin, you know, any portion of delicious beer with this disgusting spirit? But I mean, Baijo, think about it, is grain based. This is based in, in 50% sorghum, 50% wheat. So theoretically it should, you know, play well, uh, uh, with beer just as, as much as these whiskeys would. It's just that, you know, these, have, this has been deeply rotted and funkified and all that stuff by the, uh, the chew that they mix it with to make it. Um, all right. So that's my lineup. Uh, we're going to go through these. First, I'm going to try the, the expedition stout just in its own in my little Bunahaven glass here. Um, so on the nose, this, this is, uh, uh, a, a 2017 batch, late 2017. Um, Russian Imperial Stout, it is 10.5% uh, alcohol already, so um, already pretty damn strong. On the nose, you're getting classic stout flavors. Um, the, the, the hoppiness that was originally on this has kind of receded almost completely. This is a very old beer at this point. You can kind of get it a little bit in the background, but mostly I'm getting just delicious, a delicious sort of dark fruitiness. The... Um, the toasted malts, the darker malts are, are really in command here. So think, you know, like, like berries, mixed wild berries. Um, throw some like raspberry ice cream in, uh, in, uh, uh, um, kind of a gentle graininess, but, um, maybe like a, throw like a, like a chocolate muffin in along with your ice cream, except it's, you know, maybe like a whole grain muffin or something. Maybe it was helped made by, by health folks. And they thought, you know, they, they would use whole grain, um, uh, wheat for their, um, for their muffin. It's nice. It's a very desserty, um, 
uh, delicious kind of kind of nose on the palate. This is what, okay, so I bought this years ago and I kind of had a couple and then I stuffed it in my closet and I can kind of remember why at this point. This is actually, so it's delicious. The hops come out much more on the palate. So you're getting a little, little, little um, hoppiness, a little grassiness, herbaceousness, a little, uh, little um, you know, pot kind of thing going on. Um, good pot, but pot. Um, you're mixing around with the, 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 the ashy, malty thing, but it's actually quite thin. Um, uh, not like watery thin, this is more like ethanol-y thin. It's a little bit like someone threw a, threw a shot of vodka into this before you know, I, th I threw any of my line of spirits here. Let me try this one more time. Yeah, the additional alcohol of this is not really you know, giving it the body that I expect from a beer like this. It's really just kind of, you know, you have the ashy maltiness and you have like a, um, um, the hops, you have nothing in the middle. It's kind of like, it just, it just feels a little bit thin. It feels like it needs something to kind of fatten it out a little bit, which is why I'm doing this experiment, right? All right, so what we're gonna do is go down the line and see, uh, now that these have had a chance to rest from my adding, you know, mixing the, the spirits in the beer, and uh, we'll see, you know, what kind of disasters we've created with this. All right, I'm gonna start with the, uh, the, the Pita Benria, because this is the one I know. I know that stout, uh, and you know, um, uh, darker malts mixed with peaty whiskey works really well. Um, and the nose, I'm getting that. That's, uh, I mean, this is this is nice. This you you have a sort of ashy, malty, grainy thing going on, but the peat is just cutting right through that. The alcohol, the additional alcohol, is not coming through, which is great. It smells, oh God, that's, it's, an, it's a nice nose. Um, it's kind of pulled back the, a lot of the fruity notes. They're a little bit in the, in the background still. This is really more about ash and peat. And it works really well. Um, all right, on the palate. Yeah. Oh God, that works. So the first thing to note is um, we've solved the thinness problem. Something about adding even just a teaspoon of spirit to you know half an ounce and a half of, of the beer does the work of fattening it out and kind of you know making it feel more complete. Um, so the peatiness is cutting through. There's a little bit more sweetness on the palate this time. Um, uh, not it's not overtly sweet, but. It just feels more and more sort of creamy and nice in my mouth. Yeah, so I'm getting, I'm getting the smoky, ashy thing from the, the, the Imperial Stout and, the, and a little bit of the hops coming through now. Um, and, and the peat is just cutting through all of those and just kind of lifting it all up. And the additional spirity alcohol, you know, whiskiness is fattening this out. It's thickening it. It's um, making it stand on its own a little bit better. I like this a lot. Um, this is going to be a hard one to beat, which is why I put it first. This is this is supposed to be the yardstick. Um, this is uh, this is the one to beat on, on this uh, run through. All right. So moving on to the uh, the knock do. This is also a malt whiskey, but unpeated. And uh, basically with much less uh, uh, wood influence on it too. I mean, this is, this struck me as like just, we're gonna get to this in the, in the review, but it, it's just naked, malty deliciousness on the nose. Okay. Um, they aren't getting along quite as well here. I, I, uh, uh, so I'm getting the, the Imperial Stout and I'm getting the delicious kind of pear and um, appley notes from the from the whiskey kind of cutting through, but it's it's not. Um, they don't feel like they're inter intermingling and making something better. They just they feel like they're 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 kind of like just side by side. They're kind of just kind of coexisting a little bit. 
Um, but it's nice that the, the, the raspberry ice cream is still there. Um, the, the ashiness from the, from the, the malt is still there. It's just, you're, you're throwing a little, you know, apple and pear, you know, salad in there along with it on the palate. Interesting. Um, let me try that one more time. Doesn't work as well as the Ben Reich, uh, the, the peated whiskey does. But, I mean, it does, does work quite well. So again, we're, we're talking about thickening out the body. The thinness problem is, is still gone. The, and you have some some nice pat, apple and pear things going on. They're kind of playing on the they're playing around better with the uh, the berry and ashy and sort of ice creamy notes um, than uh, than on the nose. But you know it's still not as much of a synergy as with the PD whiskey. Um, let me try this one more time. Mm mm. The finish is particularly nice that you've got it like first this ash, then it's kind of, um, then it's pears, then it's raspberries coming back as the, as the beer comes. It's, it's a lovely kind of, I would love to play with the amount of whiskey I was adding on this just to see if I could get the balance right. Um, not a failure, just less of a success, success than this one. All right, moving on. I have a big glass of water on the side here because I, I know I'm going to need it. Um, all right, to the Alberta Premium. All right, so this is 100% rye. Uh, no idea how old this is, um, but presumably a mix of used of fresh oak and uh, lightly used oak. Um, I like this stuff very much. On the nose. That is, a, that is actually really nice. Um, so the, the impression I'm getting is almost as if you'd, you'd just straight up as if you'd taken this, you know, exposition stout and, and aged it in, you know, an oak, an oak barrel, an ex bourbon barrel or something for a couple of months. It's just the oak, you know, the, the vanillins, the, the coconut, this, the, that extra fruitiness coming through. Actually, it's more subtle than, than you would get if you were just overtly aging this in oak. It's, it's much, um, well, um, what is that? Sort of a little, sort of mix of baking spices coming through. Some, some avert um, like demerara sugar. More, much, uh, some vanilla actually too. On the palate. Oh yeah. Oh, that is good. Um, so this was a particularly sort of floral um, rye, not a spicy rye, but it's really the the oak from the, the thing was aged in that's coming through. Um, oh, that's really good. Um, so you're getting it's 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 sweetened up and it, it's 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 fattened out a hell of a lot actually, even more than the ben Benaria has. This feels very full and creamy in my mouth. Um, and in fact, I want to put it back in my, my mouth as quickly as possible. So here we go again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, again, the impression is like, is very similar to what you would get with an oak aged beer, um, but much cleaner actually. Um, less, less of the sort of, you know, avert, aggressive woodiness, more vanillins, more um, kind of a coconutty thing, um, more just a creamy effect. This is delicious. Um, this may be beating the Ben Reich for me, actually. This is, um, it doesn't have the sort of delicious novelty of, of the peaty thing, but God, this is good. Okay, this is 
these these two are now the ones to beat. Um, IMHO. All right, let's move on to the fun the fun stuff, the stuff that is not grain based. Um, all right, so Worthy Park, hundred uh, fermented forever. Um, you know, a zillion uh, esters per parts per million. And uh, bottled at 75.5% uh, alcohol. Well, let's see what that does on the nose. <laughs> okay, so now the beer just smells, frankly, like high ester rum. No, that's not entirely true. The um, the funky notes, uh, the... Are, are definitely cutting through there the um, the brininess, the olives, the 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 banana peel, and frankly the rumminess. Just just I mean, but in the background you can still you know you can still sense those 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 darker malts. The um, a little bit of the this actually brings out the hops a little bit more on the nose than than it was originally. Really nice. Not not quite as delicious and as as the Alberta Premium option was, but I mean, it just it just smells fun to smell rum on you know an imperial, <laughs> an imperial stout. Okay, on the palate. Okay. Oh, this works. Um, not as well as, as some of the others, but what, so what we got so far is, okay, the, 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 again, the thinness problem is gone. Something about adding, something about adding spirits seems to fix that uh, with, with this particular beer. Um, it does bring out a little bit of bitterness in the finish. The hops kind of wake up and, and kind of smack me pretty hard on the back end there. Let me try this one more time. But before then, ooh, it's not too bad. There's there's just a little bit of, of a bitter slap um, at, behind there. But the overall effect is you've got the the sort of uh, uh, heavy, nice, ashy, uh, slightly bittersweet maltiness mingling with these you know very freaky funky rum notes. And it's nice. It's it's very delicious. I don't quite like it as much as these two, but um, you know, I probably like it more than the uh, than the knock do actually. Um, that's nice. Let me try it one more time. You would have to play with the amount of rum you're adding to this, and that that's sort of a general rule, right? I mean, with all of these, I'm sort of adding the same amount of of of, of beer to the same amount of spirit. We could play around, right? No reason not to. Oh God, I'm, I'm, you know, I just, I just got finished watching that one video of the how to drink guy uh, making himself like a couple dozen Manhattans and getting completely sloshed. So I'm hoping that doesn't happen to me here. But um, hopefully this video does not end with me like vomiting off on the side. All right, uh, we're gonna move on to the uh, the Daniel Boyu, uh, our cognac brandy option. Um, I am extremely excited about this one. It's not actually doing that much on the nose. Uh, you're, there's, it's mostly still Imperial Stout. Um, there's a little bit of French oak peeking through. A little bit of, you know, like, like dried raisin, um, and maybe plum kind of peeking through in the back. But whereas where, hmm, where I was hoping for, for a kind of, you know, synergy between the sort of dark fruity notes coming from the cognac and the dark fruity notes coming from the stout, that really isn't happening here. It's, it's just kind of, it's just, you're kind of getting a little bit of confusion. On the palate,
not a total failure. Um, again, the, let me compare this to, the, to my um, to the unaltered beer. Okay, no, back up. I still like this more than the unaltered beer because it fil it it still fixes the um, the bo the thinness problem. This feels like a more full, creamy uh, kind of beer to me now that I've added some cognac to it. But um, that's kind of all it's doing. The, it, the, the cognac feels like it's getting completely lost here. Let me try this one more time. Yeah, it's maybe a little bit more fruity on the palate. Less, a little less ashy, a little bit more fruity. But aside from that, I mean, that's, you know, and, and the, the sort of additional creaminess, that's about all I'm getting from this combination, which is a little bit disappointing to me. I was, this is the one I was really hoping on. Um, man. Um, that being said, the run thing really works actually pretty well. So um, let's move on to tequila. All right. Um, so G4, uh, 108 Blanco um, on the nose. Actually works quite well. It's, it's your, so you got the, um, the base of the Imperial Stout. It still smells very malty, a little bit of, of uh, you know, that, that sort of fruity berry thing coming through still. Um, but then you got this sort of vegetal notes from the tequila kind of cutting through. You got a little celery on this. Um, you know, a little, um, a little asparagus too, which is nice. It's slightly floral. Um, but it, it's, it's, in a way it's, it reminds me of a little bit of the, uh, the knock do here. It's, it's more like the two are, you know, not creating a synergy so much as they're just kind of you know, playing well with one another. They're sort of, um, you know, right side with one another and not interfering. All right, on the palate. Mm. Kind of the same, kind of, kind of like this. You're, you're, there's a little bit of a mingling and an inter, interplay between the vegetal notes on the tequila and the um, the ashy fruity notes on the on the beer, but aside from that, you know, so I, sh I should I should preface this by saying I think I like all of these better than I like the uh, the beer as it as it initially was, again because it's they're all solving the body problem. All of them feel creamier and nicer in my mouth than they did before I added any spirit to them. Um, that being said, this this feels like one of the uh, the weaker options in this in this lineup because you know they're not it doesn't feel greater than the sum of its parts let me put it that way let me try one more time yeah take take your um nice kind of dark fruity ice creamy ashy imperial stout and just throw a bunch of vegetables in it and it's nice, and I'm enjoying it, and it's very, you know, it's filling up my mouth in, in, in a very pleasant way, but it just gets outclassed by a couple of these um, other ones. I'm going to go back to these as, quick, as quickly as I can because they're just really good. Um, but before then, we have to try Imperial Stout and Baijo. All right, we got Motai Prince here. Um, so this is the savory style of Baijo. The little brother of the famous <coughs> Guaycho uh, Motai, uh, which is the most infamous, you know, uh, Baicho basically in the world. All right. So the reason I was interested in this was to see, you know, how how a grain based spirit that was much dirtier than a traditional whiskey would would play. Um, Oh, sorry, I'm, I just wanted to touch the mouse pad because my screen was going dark. Um, would play with uh, with with beer here. So this could be a disaster, but let's see. 
Okay, to, to like this nose, you have to like Baijo. Um, let's start with that. Uh, this is very, very much dominated by the Baijo. So I'm getting, um, you know, lemon, as all the lemon, um, lemon zest, lemon juice, um, chocolate characteristics, uh, the, the, the sort of weird um, chocolate sour character from the Baijo is kind of interacting with the, the chocolate characteristics from the, uh, um, the malt in a, in a funky way, which I really enjoy. The, uh, the stinky cheese aspect of the, of the Baijo is much more restrained than it would be naked, but it's still there. A little fennel. Again, if, if Baijo puts you off, you, you are not going to like this, but because I've kind of gotten used to that, that flavor profile, I'm actually really enjoying this. I actually... Don't, you can... Okay, the uh, the dislike button is down below. I actually think this this stout and this Baijo play pretty well together. At least on the nose. On the palate... Uh, that's a little more awkward. The, um, okay. So once again, the, the thinness problem is gone. So I still like this better than the, uh, the stout on its own. Um, but, um, it feels, I mean, this, this is really more dominated by the, the, the beer and by the bitter ashiness, uh, of, of the beer. The, the hops come out, the ashiness, uh, comes out, um, and the uh yeah there's a little bit of ooh like the the of sweetness up front but then it turns immediately to kind of bitter and sour and the sour is really is 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 the thing that the the um the baijo is contributing the sort of that sort of lemony touch and i don't necessarily think it works very well here i think other baijos that aren't don't have that same kind of citric kind of character as this would work better um let me give this one more shot there's there's an idea here um it kind of half works and i could definitely see this working like if you were to serve this to, to the right crowd, like with cheese and crackers, with like appetizers, I think this would kill. Um, but you know, you could definitely improve on the com the particulars of the combination here. Like if I were to get, um, you know, a more uh, um, different style of baijo uh, that was a little more herbal heavy, less a little less sour heavy, to combine with the. Um, with the uh, the stout here, I think that would work a hair better. Um, all right, so but but I again I still like this a lot. This is this works actually pretty well. All right, let's let's decide rankings. Okay, so these these are definitely out out in front. This is kind of eh, we're we're you know uh, and so these are kind of bring up yeah. Yeah, I would say you know let's let's try let's try these um, one more time. So it's going to be the uh, the Ben Riek versus the Alberta Albert, Albert, um, the Alberta Premium for the lead. Let's see what we got here. Mm -hmm. Sorry about the mess on the camera. I'm really. I'm gonna rearrange this and look, make it look better. No, it's I prefer the Alberta Premium. I think the the overt sort of um, oaky but not too oaky touch just kind of it just works a little bit better. Um, let me double check. Both of these are extremely good. Um, I think these are extremely good combinations with with your. Um, so if you have friends over and you know you need to combine your spear collection with an imperial stout, um, both these are very good options. I would just give 
the um, the Alberta Premium the 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 edge by a little bit. Um, okay, so let me see if I remember which order this, these were in. That's the Baijo. All right, so it's it's the Baijo against the Rum. These are also extremely close. I don't think either of these is, is, you know, gonna gonna take the prize from from these two. There's a big gap between this group and this group. Um, all right. So let's see. And the tequila one. Wait a minute. You know what? I'm going to switch these two. All right. So that we have we have a cluster here, we have a cluster here, and I think uh, uh, the tequila is just slightly ahead of the uh, the Worthy Park, in my opinion, as a you know pairing with his, with his beer. Um, but it's very close. Okay. So the um, so sound of the Caden heads for for sort of last to avoid uh, DFL. Um, we got these two. Oh, that's that's the tequila. Yeah, I'm sticking with this order because, I mean, the the Caden Heads is adding something. It's adding that sort of malty, appley, perry note, which is nice. Whereas this is just not adding much of anything aside from just fixing the thinness problem. Um, so yeah, this would be my order. Um, and if you wanted to add, <laughs> Jesus, this is the stupidest video I've ever made. Um, if you wanted to make, to add uh, spirits to your whiskey, here would be my, my order of priority. High proof cognac, doesn't really work that well. Um, kind of naked malt whiskey, actually surprisingly doesn't work that well either. Um, don't ask me why, I'm, I'm surprised this actually didn't didn't do better. Um, rum does pretty well. Um, this adds a nice funky note. It just doesn't enhance the uh, the palate all that much. It does a lot with a nose because, you know, uh, some, something about rum plus delicious, you know, beery, dark maltiness works works pretty well. Um, the tequila works just a hair bit better though, um, in in my humble opinion. This is the one that's going to be uh, uh, controversial. If you like, if if you can get past the um, the the learning curve on Baijo and learn to appreciate that set of flavors, I think you will enjoy the combination of Expedition Stout and and um, Motai Prince very much. And this would be a killer option to serve with, you know, basically any kind of like starch and cheese um, appetizer options. Uh, very much a, a food pairing. Um, but then we get to the, the ones that really, really work well, which are the the peated malt whiskey and it represented with our beer, Ben Riak, which isn't even the, like, I feel like if I had thrown like a Laphroaig or something in here, we, like these two would be neck and neck. This might even be passing the um, the Alberta, Alberta Premium. Yeah, this just works really well. The, the peat and the, you know, the, the oak just, just elevates this wonderfully. It's a wonderfully um, synergistic pairing. Um, have I used the word synergy too many times in this review? I feel like I have. Um, but I mean, for me, the the winner in terms of sheer deliciousness has to be the the stout paired with this Alberta Premium. Um, Full disclosure: This is very much a desserty kind of option. This is um, 
this is just sweetness and oak and fruit and you know delicious ice creamy stuff and and more fruit all day long um uh i'm kind of i'm kind of okay with that though i feel like that's where you know a lot of imperial stouts kind of want to go anyways and this is just kind of kind of you know lifting it up that extra level actually a couple of levels um Yeah, that is delicious. Um, I actually prefer that over most of the um, oak-aged stouts that I've had. Um, and, uh, well, hang on. Let me try the, uh, the, uh, the control one more time. Yeah, just to confirm, I like all of these better than I like the control. Um, better than I like the, uh, the sort of normal Bell's Imperial Stout, at least the one that's been sitting in my closet for four years. Um, something about the addition of the spirit just brings them up a level. So maybe that's, so, you know, this is a little bit of a stupid video. It's, it's a little bit ridiculous and I understand that, but there's like a serious thought here. I really think folks, even if the producers don't do it for tax reasons, you know, folks at home who have an extensive spirits collection like like I do, because, you know, I'm neurotic or something, um, would do well to experiment with mixing them with their beers, because especially with their stronger beers. I always found it worked better with stronger beers. Um, I'm not going to do the, the how to drink guys matrix thing because I will just get all screwed up. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, uh, because the, the results are kind of speak for themselves. These are, these, all of these are better than what I started with. And, um, maybe that's the takeaway from this. Like, uh, if, if, if you don't like something, try adding, you know, a little bit of felt butter premium to it and see if that doesn't make it better. Um, and that's a hell of a takeaway, but that's what I got. Thanks for watching. Cheers.